Boom. What is it, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. It is Jacob Tucker back at it, but yet again for another video um, on how to use the new REST API that the Flow Team released. So thank you, Flow Team, for the new REST API. Really excited to show it and uh, really excited to use it. Um, but before we get going and start learning, I just want to give a massive thank you to Brain um, in the Flow, um, you know, Discord channel. Brain helped me learn everything about the REST API. Didn't know anything about it beforehand. So um, I hope this video is a reflection of um, his intelligence and all the hard work that he did to learn about this kind of stuff. So thank you, Brain, for helping me out and for teaching me about this new REST API. So let's go ahead and start, um, you know, learning about what this actually is. And let me take these glasses off because I can't see anything. Okay, so first of all, what is, you know, this sort of like REST API? What's all the hype about it? You know, what, what can we do with it? Well, the REST API, you can basically think of it as like a way to access or get data about some cool stuff with the Flow blockchain, right? So like events, uh, transaction data, account data, stuff like that. Um, and we can do that just by, you know, calling into like a, a URL almost, you can think about it. So what, what I'm looking at right here is docs.onflow.org slash HTTP dash API. Um, and this is basically like all the documentation for the, you know, REST HTTP API that we're going to be using with and interacting with uh, throughout this video. So um, what I want to show you is a little bit about like what this is actually going to look like. So uh, let's actually start off with getting some, uh, you know, some data about a transaction, right? So let's go into, I don't know, like let's click on this transaction. So let's see what the heck is going on. So it says get a transaction by ID. So there's a bunch of information here, right? Like get a transaction by ID. It says get a transaction data by providing by provided transaction ID. It says the path parameters are an ID. What the heck does that even mean, right? So it can be a little confusing. Um, if you've never worked with this type of thing before, I know I hadn't before this. Um, and you know, there's like some URLs here. So I'm just gonna show you how to actually, you know, actually make this call to get some data. So to do that, let's actually go ahead and get a transaction ID first. So I'm on uh, main net flow scan right now. Let's see if we can click on, okay, boom. So I got this one. So I just clicked a random transaction on flow scan and here's a nice little transaction ID we can use, right? So I'm gonna keep this up for now and go back. And um, you'll see if we click on this button on the right-hand side here, it's gonna show us some options that we can use to interact with our, you know, to, with the HTTP API. So it's showing you some cool stuff. Like here's the flow canary. I love that name by the way, but I don't even, I don't even know what the canary is if we're being honest. The flow testnet, the flow mainnet, right? So these are the URLs you're going to use to get information about, you know, the data. So if we go to flow mainnet, for example, let's just let's just click on this and copy it, right? So let's copy it. And let's go to a browser here and let's 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 paste it in. Now you'll see that at the very end, it's like curly braces ID, right? You can see that it's like curly braces ID. That's where we put our actual ID. So let's go ahead and copy this uh, transaction ID, delete that little ID thing, and paste this. And you'll see that we get a bunch of information. So this is information about this transaction, right? This is the ID. This is like a, probably the encoded script. Uh, there's no arguments. This is the block ID, the gas limit, who paid for it, the authorizers, all this cool stuff, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to actually interact with this in your application, specifically your Node.js backend, to get this information. But that's pretty much what it is. It's just a URL where you can put in some parameters and get some cool data. So let's actually do this thing, right? So I have, I'm opening up VS Code. I have nothing open. Well, now I have nothing open. Um, and so yeah, let's just let's just work through this together. So I'm gonna first of all initialize a package at JSON. So npm init, um, and I'm just gonna enter through all this. And this is just going to create our own package at JSON for us. And so this is, allows us to install some dependencies. So I'm gonna npm install at on flow slash fcl and axios. So these two things. Let me make sure you can see it. So at on flow slash fcl and axios. So let's go ahead and enter. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, it's going to install some stuffs. And uh, all right, so now we installed some node, some modules. It's in our package.json now. Here's onflow, FCL, and Axios, right? So let's go ahead and make a new file called main.js. And I'm just going to import these two. So const Axios equals require um, Axios. And we're also going to do const um, FCL equals require um, at onflow slash FCL. Boom. And so I'm also just going to make a simple function called const do stuff um, equals async um, little, you know, this is just like uh, arrows ES6 syntax. And we're just going to call do stuff. And so what we're going to do in this function is just um, output some data just so I can show you what exactly is going on. So for example, if I want to console.log, hello, you idiot, um, and save that, you know, we can actually go to our terminal, 
um, we can run node main.js and then it logs, hello, you idiot to the console, right? So you are in fact an idiot, which is why you've come to, you know, the flow God for some help. Okay, so inside of our do stuff, let's actually uh, make a request to get this um, stuff, right? So what we can do is use Axios to actually make this request for us. You can use a bunch of other stuff. I'm pretty sure there's like a built-in HTTP module you can use, but Axios makes it really, really, really easy to do this stuff. So let's just use Axios to get the information. So let's say const uh, result equals await. Oh, oops, I spelled that wrong. Const result equals await axios.get. And inside of here, we're just going to pass in a URL. So let's open up a little, um, you know, you are, uh, let's open up a little string and let's go ahead and actually t copy this URL into our application. Boom, we paste it right in. And then let's just go ahead and console.log result.data. So, you know, it's going to be result.data here. Now, if we run this, let's go ahead and clear so we can see it more clearly. And we run node main.js and here we go. So this is the exact data we saw on the website, right? So ID, the script, the arguments, the reference block ID, the gas limit, all this kind of cool stuff, right? And that's exactly what we saw right here. So I just wanted to show you how to pull it into your application. Now we can do some more, more cool stuff with this. My personal favorite is getting event data. So this is, I think, the most important, um, getting event data. So let me show you how to do this now. So um, you can also get event data with um, the Flow Client Library or FCL. And I'm gonna, actually going to make a video on how to get events using both FCL and what I'm about to show you right now. But just for the sake of this video, because we're learning how to use the REST API, um, this is a nice little complicated example. So I'll show you how to do it. All right, cool. So what we can do is we want to get some events, right? So we want to get some information about like what events have been emitted um, in the last, you know, like, I don't know, couple minutes. So like, we can specify a height range to get different events on. So if you don't know what a height is, you can almost think of it like, you know, it's like an infinite ladder and like it's just throughout time, right? So it represents time. So the latest block has the most, you know, has the highest height. And that's like where everything's occurring, right? So we're gonna get some event data in the past, like a uh, you know, few seconds, whatever it may be. Cool. So to do that, um, to actually, uh, you'll look at here, here. So it says get events. The first thing that's required is the type. So this is like the actual like event type. So this is the event that we wanna query for. Um, so what we're gonna actually do in this video, why not? Um, let's actually look up, um, I forget what the, the contract is, but let's actually, Let's look up the, the flow token contract. So I, I, this is what I always do. I always go to um, core contracts. And then I think I go to, yeah, I go to flow token here. So we can actually copy the mainnet address of flow token. Oh, let's, oh shoot. Let's copy the mainnet address of flow token. And let's actually go to the flow view source um, at uh, mainnet slash account slash that address. And we can actually look at the flow token contract. So let's say we want to get all the events of tokens deposited, I don't know, inside a flow token, right? So we can see that, hey, people are interacting with flow token. So what this is representing, this type, this is an identifier. So an identifier, let's actually do const um, type. So this is the identifier. It's always a dot. And then after a dot, it's the um, address of the, um, of the account that the event is in. So this is the address up top. So address, and then you remove the OX or the zero X. Then you do dot, and then the name of the contract, which is flow token. And then you do dot, and then the name of the event. So tokens deposited, right? Boom. So there is our type that it's saying we need um, in order to, to make this happen, right? Cool. Okay, awesome. So now that we have our type written out, this is the event that we actually want to get. Um, we also need to go back to our you know thingy here. Um, and uh, if we go back down to events, um, so we need the type and it says the type is required. It doesn't say the others are required, but you actually do need one of these other parameters or it won't work. I just spent some time debugging that. Um, so let's actually, so we already have the type, which is the event that we want. Now let's go ahead and specify a start height and end height. So, um, you know, the end height, you know, you might be wondering how we're actually going to get these heights. Well, the end height is, is the most recent height that we want, um, to be able to get the events from. And the starting height is below that, right? So again, if it's a ladder where the top of the ladder is the most recent, the ending height is somewhere up here and the starting height somewhere down here. And there's a range in the middle, right? So how do we actually get the end height? Well, you can get the latest block on the blockchain and the latest block is basically the most recent thing that happened on the blockchain. So if we get the latest block and then get the height of that, we can then take a range and subtract from that height and get our starting height. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we already imported FCL. This is why we imported FCL. Let's go ahead and say const um, end height. 
equals await fcl.block, just like that, and then dot height. So this fcl.block gives us the latest block, and then dot height is the height of it. And then we can also say const range equals, let's just say 10. So what we're going to do is let's go back to here. Let's copy um, this uh, little URL right here. So, um, you know, mainnet.onflow-events. So we're going to replace this. And then we're going to say question mark type um, equals the type. And then and start height equals um, uh, end height minus range. And then and end height equals um, end height, just like that. Um, and then that should be good to go. And so we should be able to console.log the result.data. So let me just make sure I did this right. Start height, end height. Yeah, this should be good to go. So if we go back to our application, let's clear. And let's run node main.js. Um, and it looks like I got an error. So what did I do wrong here? Um, I must have done something wrong. So either... Oh, yes. And the reason it's giving us this error is because, okay, so we're using FCL here, um, but we didn't we didn't configure FCL to point to mainnet or testnet. So when it says FCL.block, it doesn't know what, what um, you know, network it's looking at. So we have to say FCL.config, just like this, then dot put um, access node dot API. And we can, uh, let's just, we're using, look, we're using REST mainnet. So we have to make sure we do mainnet. So HTTPS um, mainnet dot, on flow.org and we should be good to go so let's clear again let's run node main.js and boom look at this we get all the event data here um these are all the events that happen in the certain block so at block id so at this block at this height um you can see that these are all the events that were emitted and that's 09 right this one's 10 so this is the very next block all these events were emitted and then at 11 which is the next block all these events were emitted and like I said, you can see each of the events that were emitted in each block by just doing, you know, accessing one of the elements and then doing dot events. And then, you know, these are all the events that were emitted in that certain block, right? So um, there's a lot you can do with this. Just wanted to sh show you how you could talk to, you know, the REST API. I hope this helps. Um, I, you know, some of you may also be asking, well, what about like a post request? I could do that, but honestly, I'm both lazy. And also, I don't know why you would ever really use the REST API to submit like a post request, like submitting a transaction. It's far easier just to do this with um, FCL because with if you're submitting, you have to specify every step of the way. Just do this with FCL. I don't know why you would do that with this, but um, definitely helpful to get some data out using the HTTP REST API. So hope this was helpful. Thank you, Brain, again for helping me. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.